It's 3.30 in the morning in a parking lot in California's Sequoia National Park. Two University of California Berkeley researchers walk a half hour into the forest. Hi, tree. They'll each climb three giant sequoias by sunrise. Anthony Ambrose is climbing this giant sequoia to find out how it's faring after four years of drought. We are at about 240 feet at the top of a giant sequoia tree. These leaves will tell him how stressed out the tree is by the lack of water. You need to measure them um, kind of at the most relaxed time of the day before the sun rises, before they start to lose water to the atmosphere. So we kind of uh, get their baseline, kind of most relaxed state, and then their most active state in the middle of the day. At noon, Ambrose's colleague, Wendy Baxter, makes her way up another giant sequoia. Giant sequoias are just such special trees. They've been able to persist and live in this exact place, maybe for thousands of years. Some of them live to be 3,000 years old. Over the course of their long lives, they can grow as tall as a 30-story building. There's a beautiful view up here. Even at these great heights, they're able to get water to leaves at their treetops. There is higher concentrations of water in the soil than in the air, so that gradient is actually pulling the water up through the tree. Inside each of the tree's cells, water gets pulled up to the top of the tree as if it were being sucked up through a straw. Researchers can determine how much tension the water is under as it travels upward and into each leaf. When we clip it, the water retracts back into the stem, kind of like a rubber band. Then researcher Ken Schwab places the leaves in a pressure chamber. And when we put our stem into the pressure chamber, the amount of pressure that it takes to force the water back out is an indication of how much tension it was under. And I'm beginning to see darkening and water. The higher the pressure required to push the water out, the more stressed the tree is. The trees are definitely um, as stressed as we've ever measured giant sequoia. We've, we've been measuring giant sequoia water status um, periodically over the last few decades under non-drought conditions. And most of the trees seem to be kind of at that level or exceeding it. They require an enormous amount of water, way more than any other tree that's ever been documented. So Nate. But biologist Nathan Stevenson yeah. says that little water has been available to the trees. Uh, yeah. That's because uh, giant sequoias get most of their water from snow. So the last two winters here have been by far the warmest on record. And what that's meant is there's been almost no snow on the ground. All this yellow here yeah. wasn't there when we rigged it just oh, a few weeks yeah. ago. In the summer of 2014, Stevenson noticed something new. I looked up and I saw a big, mature, giant sequoia and its foliage was turning brown. At least half of its foliage had gone brown. No one has ever reported that before. Only a handful of the park's sequoias have perished during the drought. But according to the U.S. Forest Service, more than six million trees of other species in the Sierra Nevada mountain range have died. We're seeing firs, pines, incense cedars, and oaks are all dying at a rate we've never seen before. Even during the 1977 drought in California, we didn't see this, this many trees dying. Trees move water from soil to the atmosphere, which helps create rain and snow. When little water is available, the pull of the dry atmosphere creates so much tension that it breaks the water column. Gas that was present in the water forms bubbles, which prevent water from moving up to the treetops. If bubbles stop water flow in cell after cell, the tree dies. Over time, tree deaths can reduce precipitation and cause the land to dry even more. Giant sequoias are resilient trees, and for now, most of them are weathering the drought, says Sequoia National Park's Corin Nydic. 
a lot of our sequoias are still appearing healthy, still doing well during the drought, but there are some that are showing symptoms and we want to learn more about that and be able to track that stress. Researchers can only climb a fraction of the area's estimated 160,000 giant sequoias. So the park has also enlisted scientists who can survey many giant sequoias at the same time. The Carnegie Airborne Observatory measures the tree's water content. The blue trees are getting the most water. The yellow, orange and red trees are getting the least. The park has a plan to help the most vulnerable giant sequoias. One strategy, which might seem counterintuitive, is to burn part of the forest. Because giant sequoias are resistant to fire, they stand to gain. There's less competition for the larger trees that remain behind. So the larger trees have more access to water and nutrients and helps them get through the drought. And if the symptoms got more severe, the park might consider watering its most famous giant sequoias, including the General Sherman, billed as the largest tree in the world. The National Park Service doesn't currently water any plants, choosing instead to let nature take its course. But that could change. Looking to the future, if humans continue to warm the climate by adding greenhouse gases to it, we might have to consider some unnatural actions. With snowpacks disappearing, the park may be forced into a more active role. One that could include drip irrigation for the General Sherman and the other famous trees.